When I was 23, my first real serious relationship fell apart. The one I thought would last forever. The relationship dissolved, and so did I. I mean, myself really dissolved. I felt as if there was nothing connecting my organs together, no connective tissue. I felt as if my brain and my thoughts and my feelings were floating across the sky like wispy clouds, pulsing through this collection of unattached pieces was a single, repetitive, unanswerable question. Why? 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 And then, not in words, but in damp, soggy dread, a barely audible whisper, because you did something wrong, because you are bad, because you are unlovable. Looking back on it now, I think about with those kind of beliefs coming through, no wonder I didn't want a firm container. No wonder I wanted them to move away. But at the time, I had no objectivity about it. I was terrified. I didn't know what to do. I was afraid I would be locked up if someone could see the extent to which I had fallen apart. I took up swimming laps at the Y because there something held me together, water. There was a force holding my body together. Even though as I thrashed back and forth like a polar bear in a small zoo pond, I could feel my consciousness swim away like tiny fish darting from me. I was numb and heartbroken because of the relationships ending, and I had nothing to hold on to. I was in deep need of balm in Gilead. I was in deep need of healing. Perhaps you too have been there at some point. I've seen it happen to others. We recognize each other. After a death or a job loss, an illness or a divorce, whatever the cause, that kind of dissolution is terrifying on a cellular level. Friends speak as if through a faraway tunnel, mouthing words. Would you like to go to dinner? How about a movie? Fortunately for me, I needed to pay the rent. Work demanded that I put one foot in front of another, even if woodenly. New to Minnesota, I took a job two blocks from my house in a residential shelter for young kids, babies to age five, who were removed from their homes because they were abandoned, abused, or neglected. Those children had suffered, in many cases, as badly as prisoners in the worst jail. Just as they were forming into human beings, they had no way of knowing that there was any other way to be, to live. What had formed in them was centered around that awful belief that every child carries. There's something wrong with me. There's something about me that is causing these adults who I love and who I need to treat me this way. In caring for those children, in cherishing their fragility and vulnerability, in witnessing their resilience and force of life, I began to see and to know a healing power of love. Caring for those children over weeks and then months and finally years, I was able to learn to care for myself as well, for my own most fragile and vulnerable parts. And in that caring, I began to feel and know my own resilience and life force. I came to see that the part of me that had fallen to pieces was a very young part. The, the abandonment by someone I thought I could count on in my 20s mirrored my early experience as a baby and toddler. Like everyone, I had parents who did their best. We all do our best as parents, 
and we all make mistakes. In my case, I had a raging father and a depressed mother, neither of whom could be counted on to pay close attention to my needs. The children in the shelter came from situations much more dangerous than mine. By the time they arrived, they knew how to push every adult's buttons in very manipulative ways. They had never learned the give and take of love that most children access directly. They made it as hard as they could for us to love them. They hit us, they scratched us, they hid in cupboards and made sexually suggestive comments to us. They ate soap and they refused to sleep. But in a staff team where there was health and vitality and support, where together we could offer consistency and unwavering care, they became so quickly shiny and bright and full of life. Witnessing this transformation over and over, I came to a new knowledge that changed everything. Here it is. There is no such thing as an unlovable child. There are only adults, all of us, who are imperfect at loving children. There is no such thing as an unlovable person. We are all lovable, as imperfect as we are, and as imperfectly as others are able to love us. The resilience I witnessed in those children, the force of life that still yet, despite so little encouragement or recognition, leapt into being the moment it was valued and recognized, that life force to me is the healing balm in Gilead. Call it what you want, use whatever name or lack of name, it makes the wounded whole. It called those children and it called me back to life. And for that, I will ever be grateful. There's a part for you to sing here, two words, going home. A song for the sailor lost out to sea, a song for the mother who always will grieve, a song for the soldier who lays down his life. A song for the woman who once was his wife A song for the traveler down on his luck A circus man plying his trade for a buck A song for the child who's lost in the night Though she's never seen stars, she still clings to their light. Going home, going home, going home. A song for the mistress who dares to believe. Wiping the tears from her eyes with her sleep A song for the poet who runs out of time Before she can finish her famous last A song for the miner who digs out the coal Dreams of a life somewhere far from this hole A song for the rebel who gave up the fight Haunted by guilt Cause she still knows she's right Going home 